Okay, last part of chapter six, taxation. And we're really only doing the taxation of individual, I mean, of the consolidated companies. So we're gonna skip a little bit of this taxation stuff. All right, taxation of consolidated companies. All right. All right, so 80% ownership of subs makes you an affiliated group. All right, so affiliated groups can file consolidated tax returns. If don't qualify as an affiliated group, Everybody files their own return. Separate returns filed. I want to tell you a little something about that before we go on. If you come down here, all right, right here where this asterisk is, members of the consolidated group when filing separate returns must sum their incomes when applying graduate corporate tax rates. So even though they're flying, applying separate returns, they have to add up all their incomes to figure out what tax rate they're in, okay? The lower tax rates available for low income levels can be used only once and cannot be applied to each of the companies individually, all right? So you need to watch out for that. That makes a little bit of a difference. I'm gonna copy that a little bit. Well, it's not a perfect, but close enough. All right, so just keep that in mind. We're not going to actually do that, but I just, you know, want you to be aware that it's, that it's there. Okay, now another thing that you need to remember, if you meet the requirements, you can choose to either do a consolidated tax return or file separately. <clears throat> All right, once you decide to, um, to file together, like as a single consolidated entity, then if you want to split back up and do tax returns separately, you have to get permission from the IRS. Okay. All right. When you're doing a consolidated tax return, which is what we're going to be doing. Some things to keep in mind. Um, consolidated income. I'm going to scoot this over. is the basis used to calculate tax. All right, and that part's actually not, you know, too bad. It's it's splitting it out between the NCI and the sub and the controlling interest that's kind of a pain. All right, so they're showing you, they're giving us an example, all right? And it's, let's see, a Company P acquired an 8% interest in Company S on January 1st. Sorry, I'm having a moment. Give me a second. On January 1st of 2015, at which time the following determination and distribution excess schedule was prepared. All right, and then notice they had a patent which has 6215 amortization. Okay, so P by S. All right, this is the separate financials in 2017 for P&S. All right, and then in 2016, P sold equipment with the book value of 40 to company S for 60. So you had a $20,000 gain as a five-year life. All right, so the gain's gonna be deferred and then recognized as a decrease in expenses at the rate of 4,000 per year. And then the depreciation on that equipment is 12,000. All right, then we also had some intercompany sales. All right, intercompany merchandise sales 2P by S. All right, so we had beginning inventory, ending inventory, the actual sales amount, gross profit rate is 50%, and then we have a 30% tax rate. 
So I go through all the normal eliminations and the um, working paper is on page 348 and 349. So let me show you that real quick. All right, here's the working paper for it. All right, so there's the first two columns. I, I hate this. It's, it's really, we can't really do too much with it. But anyway, here are the eliminations and adjustments. And then down here at the bottom, here's our consolidated income. Kind of need to be aware of that number. All right, so that number is 237,750. All right. Um, and then that's it for the moment. Okay, so let's go back up here because we're going to use that 237,750 here in a minute. And you know, I'm not going to type all these numbers out. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you where they're coming from. Um, I might copy this over and type where numbers are coming from there, but we'll see. Okay, so they do all the adjustments, you know, all the eliminations and all that lovely kind of stuff. Um, the inventory adjustments, the um, patent amortization is in here. Here's the equipment and then here's where they're recognizing part of that deferred gain all right so all that's in there <clears throat> all right then the tax part comes off of that 237750 that was a consolidated income we i looked at that on that worksheet a minute ago <clears throat> all right then we don't get to deduct the NCI portion of the amortization on the patent. All right, so the amortization on the patent was this 6250. All right, the NCI is 20%. So patent amortization is 6250. Oh, I don't need that. I need that. All right, so that's the NCI share, NCI share of patent amortization, All right? We don't get to deduct that. So that has to be added back. Then we have the adjusted income times the tax rate, and there's our income tax. And then on the consolidated financials, this entry would be made, okay, for, the, for taxes. Entries would not be made on separate books at this point. It's not yet. Okay. Um, now, you know, or if you remember, we do those income schedules, and then we also do the, we do the subsidiary income schedule. Okay. We also have to do a subsidiary tax schedule. So let me do the subsidiary income schedule first, and then we'll do this tax schedule. Okay, so I've typed out um, the subsidiary's income distribution schedule, and let's let's talk about the numbers. So, all right, so we have the internal net income that came from their income statement, and then we have the adjustments based on the eliminations. So the beginning inventory release of profit, the ending inventory decrease the profit and then the amortization on the patent, I think it was. All right, so it ends up being 83,750. All right, the next up is the subs share of tax. Well, before I can do that, I have to do this subsidiary tax schedule. Okay, and I have it here, but let's do it so we can talk about the money or talk about where the number's coming from. All right, and pay attention to the numbers at the beginning. All right, so number one, total adjusted income. All right, and remember, this is just for the sub. So it's important that you remember that. All right, so the total adjusted income, you start with the 83,750. The NCI gets 20% of that. And the controlling gets 80%, or you can subtract however you want to do it.
All right, the second line, number two, is the NCI share of asset adjustments. All right, so that's that 6250, okay? You can't deduct the NCI share of that. So that's the 6250 times their 0.2 share. All right, and that carries on over to here. All right, three is just adding them up. Taxable in taxable income. And it's one plus two. Okay, and the fourth thing is the tax. You calculate the tax, and it's 30%. It's the percent times number three. I should say, I'm going to put a number sign for that. So 67 times 0.3. I'm thinking that number, see where they have 75,000 there? That should be 85,000 for sure. All right, they add those two up. All right, 25,500. I, I get the same number in the end as in that 75 should be um, 85. This 75 right here, that should be 85,000. All right, and then five, net of tax, share of income. All right, so this one, I'm going to put it right here. This one is one minus four. All right, so it's this top one minus the tax. So 67,000. Minus the 20, and then 16,000 minus the 54, and then those two just add up. Okay. Um, or you should be able to do the 83 minus the 25. Should work out either way. I'm going to put a double underline under that. And I'm going to go ahead and put one under that, too. don't know if we really need it, but I'd like to know that it's done. Okay, then these numbers come back up to here, right? So, all right, this number right here is that is that. All right, and then company S share of tax is this 255 Did they show us the schedule? That's actually down here. They they had already done the schedule. It's just with the worksheet. Okay, so that 25.5, that comes up to here, All right? And then subtract it out. All right, so that's net income. And then the NCI share, you pick up from here. You don't multiply it out. 
you pick it up from this schedule. So that comes from here. And then the controlling share, if you subtract that, it should equal this 56.9, or 46.9. Okay, sorry, I had a very long pause. So excuse me if I don't exactly remember where, where we were. But anyway, so the sub income distribution schedule, this, this ending part of it, is done based on this subsidiary tax schedule. So this tax schedule has to be done before you can do this bottom part of the sub income distribution schedule. And then let's go look at the, let's go down to the worksheet. Okay, so, and then there's the, the 11350 that went to the sub, and then the rest goes to the um, controlling interest. Let's see, line 30, let's see what that is. Yeah, oh, consolidated net income, sorry. And it's split. So there's, oh, there's the tax. Whew, okay, let me get my brain going again. I told you I wasn't quite sure. So here's the, the 7170, that was just the 237 times the 30%. That was from this up here. These things are too far apart, it's annoying. Right here, you, you did the 237,750, added back the NCI share of non-deductible amortization, then times the 30%, and that was a 7170 of income taxes. You would also make this entry for it as well. Um, and then that's the 7170 that's subtracted out to get, here we are, the 7170 subtracted out to get to the consolidated net income, and then 11350 that goes to the NCI, and then the rest goes to the controlling interest. Okay, and that's basically all that we're doing. For the tax stuff, there was a little bit more here that you might want to read over, but we're not going to actually do it. Okay, so some things to keep in mind. <clears throat> Subsidiaries would record their share of the tax, all right, on their own books. And then the parent company also makes some adjustments. All right, um, sub income is going to go down by the amount of the, the company's the sub's tax. Investment goes down by the same amount, and then the provision for income tax for the parent. All right, goodwill. They, we're not going to do the numbers for goodwill, but Goodwill does pose a little bit of a difference in here because um, Goodwill stays on the books forever until it's deemed, um, oh gosh, what do they call that? Well, worthless. There's a word for it, but I can't think of the word off the top of my head. <clears throat> um, so you don't amortize it on your books. However, for tax purposes, it is it can be written off over 15 years. All right. <clears throat> So this one has amortization of five thousand per year, times the if the if a company had a forty percent tax rate, that would be two thousand on taxes, and it would come out of the income tax payable and go to against 
a deferred tax liability or go into a deferred tax liability. Oh, impairment. There's what I was looking for right there. Hello. <clears throat> All right. And then if it's impaired, if you have an impairment loss or you lose your goodwill, then you record a loss. Goodwill comes off the books and then it comes out of your deferred tax liability and goes into the provision for income taxes. All right, we are not doing separate returns, so you might, but you, you can certainly read through that, see what they talk about, but that is basically it for us. All right, so I'm going to work out the homework problem, but I'm going to do it in a separate video.